Chances are there's something you enjoy more than Adobe Photoshop. It might be other tasks of the job, or better yet, family and friends. By harnessing the power of Photoshop's automation commands, you can quickly take repetitive tasks and slash the production time. Using commands like batch process will allow you to take an action and apply it to an entire folder of images. Throughout the course of a project, this can shave hours or even days off of the project. Let's see how. The batch command in Adobe Photoshop is a very powerful command to get things done. Let's choose File, Automate, Batch. And we'll do a quick overview of this interface. First off, you have to choose which action you want to play. The batch command allows you to take an action and apply it to several images. You can then specify a source. This can be a folder of images, you can import images from a source, or you can use all of the open files that you currently have open in Adobe Photoshop. Then you must choose where the images should go. Do you want to simply save and close them, which will overwrite the original files, or would you like to place them into a new folder in order to have access to the originals and the modified images? Additionally, you can set naming conventions if you'd like to rename the files. Lastly, you specify if you want to stop for errors or log them to a file. I generally log errors to a file so I can then keep the action running even if it encounters a minor problem along the way. Let's go ahead and try this out. First off, I'm going to open the actions palette so I can check which actions I have loaded. It appears I have the video actions loaded as well as the built-in default actions. Let's go ahead and load a new set of actions just for illustrative purposes. I'll click on the little sub-menu area here, right down there, there we go, and I am going to go ahead and load image effects. And one of these effects is an aged photo, so let's go ahead and try that out. I'll choose File, Automate, Batch. Let's determine that we want to use the image effects set and then I'll choose the aged photo action. Next, let's choose a folder. I have a folder on the desktop called batch that I'm going to use for this exercise. It contains four files. I'll click choose. I then am going to tell it that I don't want to know about any opening options or color profile warnings. This will bypass any warnings about profiles that don't match. Then I want to specify a new folder. So we're going to go ahead and choose a place for these to go. On the desktop, I'll make a new folder called Processed. And create it and choose. Now, I'm not going to change the file naming convention. Notice it's going to take the original name and the extension. But if you wanted to, you can add lettering or numbering or date commands to help make it easier to know which images you're working with. I don't want to stop for any errors, so I'll choose to log the errors to a file, which then requires me to specify where to save the error log. And I'll just put that out to the desktop and click Save. Now, the action is ready to go. Let's just take a quick look through. I'm going to be running the aged photo action from the image effects set. It's going to process this folder called batch. It's going to suppress any opening or color profile warnings. It will then write the files to a new folder on the desktop called processed. It will keep the original naming convention using the document name and the extension. And any errors that are encountered will be written to a file called errorlog.txt. At this point, I can click OK, and the action will run. Now, this is going quite effectively. However, it's asking me to save the file because this is a layered image. So that's fine. Let's go ahead and save the first file to process and click Save. And I'll click OK. Now, it's asking me for this each time because the action is taking the image from a flattened file to a layered file, hence the PSD command. I can click OK again. 
this constant intervention on my behalf is definitely slowing things down. So I'm going to show you an alternative approach here. We'll save that. Now, that intervention was only necessary because we went from a flattened file to a layered file, and Photoshop wanted to prompt us to save. If I'd like to get around that, there's two approaches. Approach one is I can modify the action. So let's just open up one of those images we were working with. There we go. And I will play the steps of the action. It runs through it. There we go. I'll select the last step, click the record button, and choose layer, flatten image. And now I can click stop. Notice I've modified the action, so the final step is to flatten it back to a single layered file. Let's close that and not save. Now, we can run that action again. Let's just go out to the desktop for a moment and clear out the files we weren't using. I'll go to Processed, select those and throw them away, and let's come back to Photoshop. There we go. File, Automate, Batch. Now everything from before is still loaded up, so I can simply click OK. And at the last step here, it's going to flatten the image and close and save it. Notice how fast Photoshop goes. This is because it doesn't even have to wait for the screen to redraw. Photoshop can close the image and move on to the next image before the computer screen has a chance to refresh or update the display. This is a very fast way to get through a lot of images, and this is called the accelerated mode. There you have it. We're on our final image, and it's done. Let's switch out to the desktop for a second. Open up a window, and there we go. Here's our process folder. And there are our four processed images, which ran the aged photo action as specified. Batch processing is a great way to get things done quickly.